hello everyone i am nurendra choudhary and i am uh, going to present our work on an interpretable ensemble of graph and language models for improving search relevance in e-commerce so uh, the problem of search relevance can be narrowed down to this esei classification problem uh, where given a query product pair our aim is to uh, classify the relationship between them as either exact substitute complement or irrelevant uh, so given a query like nike footwear exact relationship indicates that the product is a direct match of nike footwear so you recommend nike footwear when you are given the query nike footwear but substitute relationship implies that uh, you change one parameter in it uh, which could be due to like a lack of availability or some other uh, case of that sort like for example nike footwear you substitute the brand and recommend adidas footwear or uh, a complement relationship where you want to uh, complement the query uh, such as like a user wants to buy footwear but you also want to recommend like athletic wear uh, from nike uh, to them and then the fourth class is directly uh, irrelevant like for a query like iphone you recommend something around nike that's uh, something we don't want to do but sure uh, that's a classification uh, label as well so uh, when we initially started doing it uh, we uh, based ourselves on text features like for example if you had a query nike shoes and uh, you had a product like nike jordan you want to uh, establish a relationship between them based on semantic features however just based on text we realized that it was very difficult to uh, uh, do the classification uh, for example uh, given here for the query nike shoes if you look at nike jordan or adidas shoes they have like one parameter that are different from the original query uh, and hence our models did not perform that well what we realized however was that we had a lot of information in the form of graph uh, a lot of user behavior such as clicks impressions ads purchases or consumes and we wanted to figure out a way where we could use the this information uh, in a graph neural network kind of setting to enhance uh, the i mean using them as auxiliary signals we wanted to enhance the overall discriminator power of our uh, search relevance models so to get us a uh, look at the background in this area there are there's the text gcn approach where we used uh, node features and then uh, basically use the text as node features and then apply a gcn layer on top of uh, the net like on top of the graph that we have available the second approach is something like a graph former where they used uh, node features and then added like some manual uh, manually created uh, global graph signals such as uh, centrality encoding spatial encoding and edge encoding added them all together and then used a transformer network on top of it to do the classification and then we also have a recent work i think in 2021 where uh, we proposed to learn a have a joint training architecture where we used uh, language models to actually uh, do the text encoding and then graph models to do the uh, encoding of the graph neighborhood that is a set of query neighbors as well as the set of product neighbors available to us however uh, when we try to deploy this model there was a very important problem that we ran into which is that this model is really huge and uh, you require like a very uh, big machine to actually run this data and that is something that uh, would not be very scalable for a lot of uh, customers if you want to so, uh, serve a lot of customers right so hence uh, so just looking at the prominent challenges once is that graph and language models are huge we can't have like one machine to serve them all and then ag uh, model aggregation from language models and graph was also not a very uh, sustainable thing because like graph learned a certain information and then uh, language models learned a certain information and unless we have an, a good aggregation layer on top we were not able to do a very good job uh, third is that these models were not interpretable so like if you look at the research in lms as well as uh, graphs they are uh, independent of each other and also uh, really really fast so every 3 months you have a new lm model or a new graph model available to you and in our in the joint learning approach you can't really switch them as often you would have to retrain the new model deploy it and that would take a lot of time so hence uh, our solution was to use a graph and language model based plug and play uh, architecture in this what we do is we have a text information and we uh, use a uh, multiple language models to basically get uh, the classification label and from the graph information also we use like a lot of gnns 
to do the graph encoding. Uh, so like from all the LM models, we get ESCI probabilities. And then from graph models, we get a lot of ESCI probabilities. To aggregate them, we use a GVDT model on top where uh, we figured out that like we actually experimented with like MLP uh, attention mechanism. And then this was our final attempt, the GVDT model. And once we have features, GVDT model turns out performed the best uh, to do the ESCI classification. So now this allows us to have parallel machines running LM models and then like uh, uh, the graph models. And then finally, we have an aggregator machine that can actually aggregate all these labels and do the ESCI classification for us. So uh, another good thing is that GVDT model, because of its uh, relatively simple nature, is much more interpretable. And we use uh, sharp values to identify which of our uh, candidate LM models as well as graph models are giving us the uh, are giving us the mo are contributing uh, the most to the performance uh, finally. And based on that, we can uh, and uh, the restraint on our computational resources, we can select a set of top K models that we want to uh, finally deploy in production, and that uh, can definitely like help us switch in and switch out models uh, as and when they come right like. Uh, so that also is another benefit of this uh, operating in this framework. So to look at the overall model, we have a data processing step where we just clean our text data, create graph, and uh, yeah, basically uh, just clean data that can be uh, input into the language models and graph models. The next side is uh, model training, uh, which is also done offline. Basically, we take uh, we train all our language models and GNN models on the classification task. And then uh, the aggregator GBDT model uh, on the set of the logits that we got out of the LM and GNN models. And then we have the model selection uh, step where we take the top K models that we want to deploy in production. <coughs> and then uh, the inference part is the GBDT model uh, that we will use uh, in production. So the evaluation, we uh, did it on, I mean, there are other experiments that are available in the paper. But for this presentation, I can show you the performance on ESCI classification and then how the feature aggregation layer works and how uh, the additive explanations uh, are. So uh, for ESCI, we have a public data set available, uh, which we uh, released during a KDD Cup contest uh, in 2022. Uh, the baselines that we have is the LM models of DBERTA, COCOLM, Big Bird, and MDBERTA, GNN models, GC, and GraphSage GAT. And the relations, uh, relations that we used in our uh, data set are impressions, clicks, purchases, ads, and consumes. Our evaluation metrics were of accuracy, macro F1, and weighted F1. The reason we use both macro F1 and weighted F1 is irrelevant classification is also an important problem for us. And uh, weighted F1 is because we assume that our uh, evaluation data set will fa follow the same distribution as our training data set. So uh, to compare between the LM models, uh, this was a very surprising thing. Actually, we thought we would lose performance because joint models are supposed to be bigger and better. But we actually gained in terms of performance uh, using an aggregation of all these models. We were able to uh, achieve uh, like around four to five percent improvement in terms of uh, when compared to LM models. And when compared to just GNN models, we saw a huge performance gain of around 20 to 70 percent, 75 percent in some cases. And this is also tested in a multilingual setting. If you look at the first row, uh, we have the marketplaces of US, uh, Spain, and Japan, uh, all three different uh, languages with a very different uh, language structure. And so it shows the ubiquity of the framework that we are proposing uh, and that it works for different marketplaces. Now to look at the feature aggregation part, we see that using MLP and attention did not give us as good of a performance as GBDT. Uh, which is something that I have actually tried to use in like multiple other settings at work. And I felt that uh, this uh, definitely helps and is something that uh, we can adopt, uh, which is to replace the final aggregation layer of MLP with, uh, let's say, a GBDT model. Uh, and yeah, uh, so if you look at the contribution of the different models, we can see that uh, the language models definitely uh, contribute a lot more than the graph uh, architectures. And then in terms of relations as well, we see that, uh, uh, I mean, when we take all the relations together, of course, the, perform like, the performance is really good. 
but the strong signals like purchases and consumes actually contribute the most uh, if we take a look at the i mean uh, if we t- take a look at our relationships uh, separately so however like moving into production there are some challenges uh, the first one is that the graph signals may not be available always uh, when you have a cold start scenario where you have a new query a rare query or a new product in place then you may not have graph signals available so this model probably would not be, uh, work the best then also uh, constructing this graph itself is a pretty big process like order n square uh, if you want to take it to the best uh, possible uh, i mean the best possible uh, metrics and then uh, this added data preprocessing steps actually adds to the model latency which might be a problem so yeah uh, th- these are things to keep in mind uh, before uh, trying to see if it is a good fit for your production systems so uh, uh, for conclusion uh, graph information can uh, definitely aid esci classification gbdd models are generally better than mlp or attention uh, the best thing is that this model takes an equivalent amount of time as generic lm approaches because it can be parallelized and uh, <coughs> uh i mean the gnn steps are not very uh, time consuming uh the sharp values provide us a very interpretable way of understanding which models to use or deploy in production and then uh, yeah those additive explanations uh, allow us to uh, plug and play models uh, as and when the research improves in those particular areas uh thanks a lot uh, you can uh, find me here and then also if you have any questions please feel free to contact me on the given email thanks uh.